BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 204, Functional Nutrition with a Hormone Healthy Meal Plan. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Those of you that are regular viewers know that one of the concerns that we have talked about fairly often is a concern about diet and nutrition. Uh, Hormone replacement therapy is not sufficient in and of itself alone to get you to the healthiest state that you can have for a long and healthy life. And so we talk regularly about you need to exercise and you need to watch your diet. You need to maintain or moderate your weight. Uh, And so in talking about that, as often as we have, reading about it, studying about it, uh, Kathy has decided, Dr. Maupin, that she wants to incorporate a diet and nutrition program in the things that she offers at her office. And so we're going to be talking about what is called functional nutrition, uh, a hormone healthy meal plan, as one of the concepts. And this is information that comes from Dr. Uh, Stephen Maisley. And we heard Dr. Maisley give a talk at the conference that we attended in Orlando. And we're borrowing heavily from some of his notes, and we want to give him credit for that. But not all of what we have to say comes from his notes. Some, some of it comes from what uh, Kathy and her staff have put together that they offer uh, at BioBalance Health and that we would like to urge you to consider uh, looking at, even if you're not interested in hormone replacement or not a candidate for hormone replacement at this time, long-term good health health requires a healthy diet. And there's some fascinating new information uh, about genetic testing and about uh, types of diets like low carb, low fat, Mediterranean that can be blended to create an individual diet plan that can work to help you lose weight. And that's what Kathy is going to focus on today and and give us information about. Uh, So please attend to what she has to say. (laughs) Well, one one of the reasons that I thought this should be in my pro in my program or as an option mm-hmm. in my um, in my practice is that after we normalize hormones and within this program we will be normalizing hormones that affect weight and affect fat fat accumulation like thyroid and cortisol but we always have to I always have to attend to the question well I feel great I have more muscle, I'm exercising more, yeah. but I haven't lost weight. Mm-hmm. Now, first of all, that's an issue because it's not really weight or our gravity that we're trying to lose. Right. When you take testosterone and you get healthy, your bones get thicker, your muscles get thicker, and we've talked about this before. And that's dense. And that's heavier. denser than fat. Right. And basically, you're trading fat for muscle. So the weight may not change, but your size should change. Right. And then there are some patients whose size don't change, and part of that has to do with the diet that they're on or the eating plan that they're on mm-hmm. is not a fat-losing eating plan. It is something that's maintaining their fat while they're gaining muscle and and bone. Therefore, I I feel that there should be in in my practice an avenue or a program that these patients can actually sign on for it's just consultations where they can have a diet plan just for them and dispel all the myths that we've been told about diets, like the cabbage diet is not good for everybody. In fact, it's hardly good for anybody. The Atkins diet isn't good for everybody. The low fat diet isn't good for everybody. We are trying to do individual feeding plans, I guess. Feeding plans. Diet in the traditional sense of diet is I need to lose 10 pounds so I can get in my swimsuit. Right. So we restrict our intake of some to some radical degree mm-hmm. and we lose some weight. Maybe. And maybe. <laughs> uh, and maybe and, not. And then and when we hit our goal, we stop doing what we've been doing. We go back to what we've always done and the weight comes back on. So we're mm-hmm. talking about lifestyle changes more than we're talking about diet. Well, and quotes. finding the diet that is... That promotes for- your supplements... 
your genetic basis. Right, your individual you genetics. So in your family, yeah. you might have to have, if you're doing the cooking, you might actually have to have choices, and this is lifelong, choices that are different than your perfect diet right. for other people in your family right. who may need a different type of diet just because you're related does not mean you need the same diet. And that's that's one of the biggest problems with, I, I'm using diet as what you eat, not right. not sacrificing yourself, right. which is what everyone thinks about yes. as diet. But the diets follow family lines. Whatever you choose for your family today, even if you're exhausted and you're doing fast food and you're bringing home fried chicken or you're making deep fat fried stuff, that's going to affect the next several generations because that's how your children learn learn how to eat. And they are going to cook the exact same things you cooked for their children. And so you are not just affecting you and your family. It goes on and on. So, so choosing the healthiest diet out of low fat, low carb, uh, a, uh, like my, I thought I would be a low carb person, but I did my genetics and I'm a balanced diet person. That means and, I can we'll have about what all a little are. bit of everything. Yeah. So, and my husband's a low fat genetics. So he has to eat a little differently than I do. And I'm low carb. And you're low carb. So right. here we have everything. My, I grew up in a poor Southern family that was, we, we were blessed with poverty, and my grandmother cooked for the whole family because we all kind of lived together uh, in the hovel. And uh, <laughs> she had, she, she could cook two ways she could boil and she could fry. So I grew up eating nothing but boiled foods and fried foods. Boiled, took out, <laughs> all, boiled took out all of the nutrition, mm -hmm. or most of it, yeah. from the food that you were eating, and fried gave you goo to put into your arteries right so we ate mostly starch and mm -hmm. and starch is not good because it, it's the carbs and it builds up the sugar and we are all generations back diabetic on both sides and so, and and the diets we choose seem to follow the disease process as well i mean a lot of carbs a lot i mean genetics seem to require or crave the things we shouldn't have. Since I have been following your lifestyle diet advice, I've mm -hmm. lost 35 pounds. I know. And you, you are much healthier. Yeah. And I'm I'm very yeah. I'm very proud of you. Part of that had to do with his wife's an excellent cook and she follows that not to mention a disciplinarian. I know. She slaps me She's always watching you. Go to the snack drawer. See I don't I don't have to put cameras <laughs> in your house. I can just have your wife watch you and, and Phyllis will tell me. Yeah. So uh, so this is so we're looking at Lifestyle changes, meaning lifestyle for you, lifestyle for the next two generations to come. So you have to really think about that. And then we also are looking at what is the truth, because we've been given a whole bunch of junk on the Internet, on television, and by our government who said for years low-fat diet was healthy. Well, the food pyramid. The whole food yeah. pyramid was They've changed wrong. it. They've yeah. changed it finally after all those years of yeah. feeding school children. Right. The supposed low-fat diet, which was all carbs, right. so now we have diabetes. So whatever whatever the government does follow well, we have does affect us. Partly because of the corn syrup e epidemic. Well, they too. had that in yeah. everything too. Right. So in any case, what what um, the expert that we're talking about, Dr. Maisley, is talk is discussing is functional food, using food to functionally change your right. health, right. and and that is what we are doing in our program. I mean, you can call my office at 314-993-0963 and make an appointment for a evaluation for your diet and then medication to help you lose weight plus diet planning and exercise when, planning. When and where they're appropriate. Right. There's three or four different medicines that are now available that mm -hmm. do work. But you get uh, counseling on, you can have your genetic profile taken mm -hmm. uh, and then they can come back and tell you, you have the snack gene. You need to you need be to aware center on not snacking, snacking yeah. all the time. And maybe snacking yeah. at ten and three, but not snacking any other time. Mm -hmm. So that's that's so kind of behavioral. Overcome the negative traits that their genetics uh, make them prone to. Yes. So. Yeah. So so you can call and you can make an appointment and they can do the genetic testing. Uh, can, they can. We'll do blood work as well. If your blood work hasn't already been done for right. our for our hormone 
and if you're not already a hormone right. uh, biobalance patient, then we'll do blood work for the same, similar blood work for the diet program. Right. It's not exactly the same. Okay. So uh, let's talk about uh, a macronutrient approach, which is the genetically based approach, and some of the specific examples of what are good foods, what are bad foods. Uh, we want to talk about, a, a lot of people know that there was uh, a, a diet that was all the rage uh, a few years back about not eating uh, white sugar. And, and Or anything white. Or anything white. And, and that's not a bad rule. I've said that before. And actually, that's that's if you if you have to look at the elements that make up a food, mm -hmm. and it's and it's all if you take out white rice, white flour, right. white sugar, but that doesn't mean you can eat brown sugar yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or brown rice because they all have they all have carbohydrates in them. That mm -hmm. was what that diet was based on. Was trying to give people a a way to remember what they should eliminate from their diet. But, but one of the fundamental structures of that diet was what was called the glycemic index. And right. you learned uh, to, to know which particular things, like potatoes, were high in the glycemic index mm -hmm. and try to avoid those. And, and what Dr. Maisley is saying is uh, it's not the glycemic index, the specific amount of sugar in a carrot that you have to be concerned about. It's the glycemic load, the totality of your sugar ingestions mm -hmm. from all sorts of foods, like uh, uh, a soda, a, a Pepsi, a Coke, mm -hmm. or whatever, is like 17 on the glycemic index. Mm -hmm. And if you drink a soda with your meal and you've watched carefully about your carrots and your potatoes, but you're slugging down a Pepsi, <laughs> you've offset what you've tried to accomplish. Right. And and the, the index is more what's what's in that food, but in general we don't eat a bunch of carrots. We eat yeah. a carrot or two. Yeah. You're not so, gonna eat four thousand carrots and get you know. So the glycemic load has to do with what we usually eat in terms of a s of a helping that gives us the glycemic load. And here's why this is important. Glycemic load means when, when your food gets to your stomach, it triggers insulin. And if you have a very high glycemic load, right. you're, you are going to make a lot of insulin. And the insulin is going to carry, it attaches to sugar, glucose, blood sugar, which is made from all your food. Right. And if you have a lot of insulin and you give it a lot of quick sugar, which comes from high glycemic load foods, then you are going to not only make some energy, but the energy you're not using right then or in the next hour is going to become fat. Yes. So it's it's the amount of insulin that this triggers, which is really the mechanism for the gly high glycemic load foods causing fat. So that's why I always say 25 grams of carb total per feeding, not per day, per feeding, because that keeps your glycemic load below what's going to stimulate the insulin. And this is my information, not Dr. Maisley's. This is not what he talked about. But but this is how I take his information and use it. So an easy way to, to follow this, to keep yourself from making fat all day long, is to decrease your carbohydrate or your glycemic load, carbohydrate grams, to 25 or less. 26 is going to is going to hyper trigger your insulin. So 25 or less per feeding and you can eat small meals 6 times a day. But 25 is the max. So if you do that, you keep your glycemic load low. Okay? Yes. But two pieces of bread, that's 19. So if you want to eat something like an apple or carrots with that, then you need to eat one piece of bread with your sandwich and not two. Yeah. And then you can have the well, other actually, parts. Actually, that's a strategy that I learned to do when I started trying to lose weight. If I go out for dinner and I order a hamburger, I, I at least take the top of the bun off and don't eat it. Mm -hmm. And I often take both pieces of bread off and just eat all the other stuff that they mm -hmm. bring uh, with the hamburger. The bread is a, a critical issue for my diet concern, which mm -hmm. is a low-carb concern. So I've kind of had to give up breads. I mean, I rarely eat bread at all now, or pasta. Uh, occasionally do, mm -hmm. a special treat, but generally do not. So I eat, uh, 
try to get it balanced, but it, it's a concern. And so you will learn if you if you go to BioBalance Health and participate in this uh, diet training program that, that they have, uh, you'll learn what you can eat, what you should eat, and how you should eat it. And it's really beneficial. Well, it It'll should be a plan for the, it, it's, it's something you only, I mean, the genetic testing is something you only have to do once. Right. It's once and done, and then you know, then you, and you get like a in your head know, report right. that lists all of the, the foods you should eat and you shouldn't eat, and right. and it, it isn't meant to be restrictive. It's meant to be, here's I'm, the focus. Here's, here's your focus, and here's what is healthy for you. Right. No one can tell you what to do. Right. But you can tell yourself, if I want to be healthy, if I want to be at ideal weight, this is what I should do for me. Well, but a, an issue in general in the United States is portion control. And well, there's some things that overwhelm all this. Yeah. I mean, for everybody, big portions yeah. is is not healthy and is not going to cause you to lose weight right. ever. It'll cause you to gain weight. So they're above and beyond all of this deep fat frying and uh, high sugar for any diet, even if you're a low fat diet person, yeah. high sugar is still going to make a lot of insulin and a lot of fat, and it's going to make you feel really good for a few minutes and then terrible later, no matter who you are. Right. So there's some overarching rules right. of eating that in America we have to think about because we are overfed. We well, have yeah, food if you go to a everywhere. And, order, and a lot of times they'll put it on the menu. You can get a 16 ounce Kansas City strip <laughs> or a 19 <laughs> Which feeds ounce a family top of four. Sure yeah, it you know, should feed a family. It should of feed four. a family of four, but right. instead it's one portion. Right. And and so so those are overarching rules for eating well, losing weight, and being healthy, getting to your ideal weight. But right. now we're going to talk about specific things that have to do with diet. So um I, I'll let you. I'll let you go on. We were talking about the glycemic well, I, I'm index. Sorry, I'm, and I'm still sitting here thinking about, about the a 16 ounce, 16 ounce steak. steak and the baked potato with butter and, and sour cream and the salad with lots of ranch dressing. Well, you can share meals. There's ways to do with that. Do there that. is. There are and ways. Like you take yeah. the the bread off your hamburger. Yeah. yeah. I'm supposed to have a, bal a balanced diet. I take, I just cut the hamburger in half. It's too big a portion for me. The same portions for someone who weigh 130 pounds and, and 200 pounds are different. Yes. Obviously. So we shouldn't be eating the same meal. Well, and my wife makes me furious because she's so disciplined. <laughs> and we go out to dinner and, and, she's and people are saying, oh, you're so tiny, too. blah, blah, blah. And she's like, well, you know, because we're talking about these big portions and a load of stuff mm -hmm. comes and she eats, you know, a, a, a knob or two of lettuce. And then she says, put this uh, to go. And <laughs> So you can like, eat it the next day. Yeah, the next three days. You know? <laughs> yeah. But she's like, they, they can put the food on my plate, but they don't put it in my mouth. I'm the one that has to do that. It's true. And so that, and if you at home have taught your children to be members of the Clean Your Plate Club, you have created a monster. That is one of the worst parenting mistakes that you can make. Do not force your children to clean the plate. Teach them to stop eating when, when they're, they're full, full, but then don't indulge them 20 minutes later when they come in and say, I'm hungry, and give them a, a high carb or high sugar snack. Teach them to be disciplined. I mean, you chose to stop eating. Now you have to wait till the next meal, whatever that is, but don't. Just eat everything in sight. And always make them drink water with their meals. Yes. Because water actually helps you metabolize your food. It also helps you feel full when you should feel full. Unfortunately, we eat so fast right. that we don't feel well, full at the time that we should feel full. So, so and eating. We, we did a podcast on those slower. techniques. Yeah, yeah, those techniques are all very, very important. And that's something that we should be teaching our children. Or when you travel in the South and you decide I'll have tea, and they always look at you and say, Sweet tea. Sweet or Sweet unsweet, tea. honey. <laughs> sugar. No sugar, thanks. Uh, so let's talk about... So, so when, when we, we were talking about the genetic diets, right. so what they what the studies that are quoted um, in, in this lecture were they did three-year interventions on on different genetic types of people. Like they took the people, like the low fat people, right. the low fat genetics and the balanced genetics and the low carb genetics. And they fed, they fed some, of, some of those people of the different types, all low fat. Okay. Right. And the only people that lost weight were the people that had the low fat genetics. Right. Not the other Not two the other groups. Not the people who ate low fat. 
who ate low fat. Right. So then they did the same thing with another group of people and they divided them up equally, just like they did for the low fat diet, and they gave them low carb diets. Right. The only people that lost weight on those the low carb diet, those were the people with the genetics for it. Right. So just because your friend is doing a diet right. that is the Atkins diet. The Atkins that diet or the, that that would you. work for the low carb people. Right. And for the balanced diet people, that works as well. Right. But um that, but that's how they studied this, and that's how they determined who the the genetic makeup of people and and how they would lose weight. And they they I think that's an, a wonderful test, right. and it was something that is scientific in nature, and it was long enough to show a weight loss, five percent weight loss in the groups that ate the diet that was their genetic best diet. Well, it's an amazing test. Five percent's I mean, a lot. You, you get a a little vial, and you spit in it for 15 minutes. You get a certain volume of, of Some of it's for 15 minutes. And, and uh, they send it off to the lab, and it comes back, and you get this 15-page report on your genetic issues, strengths and weaknesses, as they relate to food. So it's, mm -hmm. it's really worth doing. It's not always what you think, either, because I, I have many people in my family who are diabetic. Right. On both sides of my family, mothers and fathers, right. I don't have you the don't gene have for gene. diabetes, yeah. but I have the gene for obesity. But you, yes, and so you could eat yourself. <laughs> so I know I into diabetes. Yes, I could, and but maybe you're they not did too. To get it unless you eat that way, right? Yeah, and so that's something I have to fight the rest of my life. It's right. not something, and I fought my whole life. I just didn't know I had the gene for it. Yeah, obesity. Okay, so we are going to wrap up this session. We're going to do another podcast on specific slides from Dr. Maisley to use his information. We focus pretty much now on Dr. Maupin's information and <laughs> her practice. And we would like to invite you to go to the BioBalance Health website and look at the diet program and make an appointment to come in and have the genetic testing and talk about uh, how to learn not a punitive, restrictive, short-term diet, but a lifestyle change that implements uh, the modality for eating that is healthiest for you, not in a rigid, Nazi, disciplined way, but in a way that if you generally adapt to it, you will be healthier, live longer, and be more functional. So please, please, please give consideration to that. And as always, thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.